this is part of the job of being a military policeman. Maybe the most dangerous part. But the danger can be minimized by learning the art of judo. Judo is the best method of protecting yourself against an attack and for launching a counterattack that's ever been invented for man-to-man -man combat. Judo is based on six principles. The first principle is balance. When standing, you're easily thrown off balance in two directions. In this position, only a slight pull breaks your balance forward. A small amount of pressure with only one finger can break your balance backward. But in the same position, you're very well braced to your left and to your right. It would take considerable force to throw you off balance in either of these directions. Even in the boxer's position, you're balanced in only two directions, to the left front and to the right rear. But you're easily thrown off balance to the right front and to the left rear. You must find out where a man is weak and learn to throw him off balance easily. The second principle of judo is stahara, the use of the stomach muscles. It's a Japanese word, stahara. For example, a larger man may grip your wrist, making it hard to break away. Bring your elbow in tight against your stomach muscles and you'll gain power. This is stahara. Lock your elbows in Use those stomach muscles. Principle number three is maximum versus minimum. Let's illustrate this by slow motion. You must learn to use your greatest strength against your opponent's weakest point. Elbow in to give you more power than all your strength against the man's thumb. Here, your opponent's thumb is his weakest point. Your strongest against his weakest. This is the most important principle in judo. It applies to every grip and hold. Find his weakest point and use all your strength against it. The fourth principle is momentum. Let's look at that again in slow motion. It would be impossible to stop this man's charge head on, but Utilizing the very force of his charge, you can direct his momentum to bring about his fall. Principle number five is major and minor operations. Hold it. Let's stop right there. Now, getting this hold was the major operation. The minor operation means putting on the pressure. In training, this may be dangerous. The principle of the major and minor operation applies to training only. In a real fight, you would get the hold and use the pressure immediately. But in training, these operations are practiced separately. First, get the hold, then apply the pressure slowly. When your partner signals pain, stop. Never run the major and minor operation together in training or severe injury may result. The sixth and last principle is leverage. For one thing, leverage may be applied to bring pain. It can also be used to throw your opponent. The principle of using your body as a lever is easy to understand, but it takes practice to learn just where to apply the leverage. You've seen the six basic principles of judo. Balance, you're always off balance in two directions. Stahara, elbows in, use those stomach muscles. Maximum versus minimum, everything you've got against his weakest point. Momentum, use his own force against him. Major and minor operations. In training, get the hold, 
then apply the pressure separately, and when he signals pain, stop. Finally, leverage. Use your body as a lever. These principles must be thoroughly understood before you take up any of the judo holds. The secret of success in the application of judo principles is practice. Practicing certain correct movements over and over again until you know them perfectly. As you learn the correct movements, you will quickly gain speed and the confidence that you can hold your own against any man. Falling correctly is one of the first things you should learn about judo. Let's use this block of wood in a little experiment. Pick it up and throw it down so it lands flat. Hmm, no damage done. Now pick it up and throw it so that it lands any old way. Well, look at this. There's a lesson in this for you. This may be you with a broken leg, unless you learn how to fall correctly. You must fall flat, so that the whole length of your body strikes the ground at the same time. But falling flat isn't all there is to it. In slow motion, watch this man's left arm and right foot. This is called beating. Here's how the beat works. It's done with one arm and the opposite foot. You beat with the arm nearest the mat as you fall. The arm that does the beating is straight, palm down, and at a 45 degree angle from the body. The opposite leg is bent. Your left arm and right foot strike the mat together an instant before your body lands, absorbing the main shock of the fall. Note, too, that your head is up, off the mat. Keep your neck tense so your head doesn't snap back. From shoulders to feet, your body is relaxed. Your right arm, if free, is bent across your chest. This is protection against a blow from the person who did the throwing. Your left leg is relaxed. It takes practice. Lie down like this in the falling position. Strike down with a straight arm and a flat foot both together. Strike hard. The harder you strike, the easier your body will land. To get the feel of falling, here's a simple exercise. With your partner on his hands and knees, place your left hand on his left shoulder and your right hand across your stomach. Now drop your right shoulder and roll along his back. Watch the mat as you slide off and beat hard. Let's try it again in slow motion. Right arm across your stomach. Left arm bent. Right leg up, chin in, and beat hard. After a while, change positions and keep practicing. You must learn to fall correctly to learn judo. For a complete defense, you must know the judo throws. There are three basic throws. The hip throw, the shoulder throw, and the leg hock. Let's look at each of these throws again more carefully. First, the hip throw. This is the starting position. Pivot around at your waist without moving your feet and hips any more than absolutely necessary. Keep your buttocks directly against your opponent's groin. At the same time as you pivot, reach down with your left hand and grasp his right wrist. And this is the time to remember that basic principle of balance. To break his balance, pull hard with your right arm. Pull him tight against you. It's important to break his balance immediately, the moment you grab him. When he's off balance, it's hard for him to resist. But note this. In pulling the man off balance, 
you have to remain upright. Do not bend forward at the waist. Your upright position helps your next movement. A knee bend. Squat straight down. Knees bent equally. A quarter or a half knee bend. Next, to prevent your opponent from stepping around you to regain his balance, move your right foot to the rear, outside and alongside his right foot. This is the throwing position and completes the major operation. Next comes the minor operation, the application of pressure. First, straighten your legs, then bend forward slightly at the waist. This lifts the man to your back. He is raised by using the strongest muscles in your body, your leg muscles. Now straighten your upper body. Let his arm go, and over he goes. The faster you throw him, the harder he falls. When the man is down, you continue to hold his right wrist in your left hand. There are two reasons for this. To help your partner fall properly in training, and in a real fight, to keep your opponent under control. Once more, in slow motion. Pivot around at the waist. Left hand takes right wrist. Pull him in to break his balance. Squat straight down. Plant your right foot. Bend forward at the waist. Straighten up, flip him over, and hang on to him. You must learn these judo movements as you would a new dance step. It takes practice. The shoulder throw is similar to the hip throw. In practice, the starting position for the shoulder throw is just like the hip throw. But here's the different movement. Your partner's right arm is over your right shoulder. Now take his right wrist with your left hand and his upper arm with your right hand. Break his balance immediately when you get the hold. Squat straight down. Straight. Do not bend at the waist. Pull hard and fast on his right arm. Pull him tight against you, your right shoulder in his armpit. To keep him in this position, lock his arm against your chest. And don't forget to block his right foot. Your right foot goes to the rear, outside, and alongside his foot. Now you have completed the major operation. This is the throwing position. To continue with the minor operation, or the actual throw, straighten both legs and lean forward slightly. Bring him up and on your back. Pull hard on his arm and rock your shoulder to the right. Again in slow motion. When you get the hold, squat straight down. Don't bend at the waist. Break his balance. Pull him in hard and fast, tight against you. Arm locked against your chest. Block his foot. Pull hard on his arm and rock your shoulder. Remember, the faster you throw him, the harder he'll fall. And speed comes only with practice. Although the term leg hock means a certain hold in wrestling, in judo it means a particular throw. Here's how the leg hock works. In the starting position, your partner stands in front of you with a hand on each shoulder. Here's your movement. Take his right elbow with your left hand. Then bring your right hand between his arms and place it on his left shoulder. Now practice a little deception to throw him off balance. First, pull down hard on his elbow. His natural tendency will be to resist to the right. And when he does, straighten your right arm and step forward. You step forward and to the outside with your left foot, bending him backward off balance. This completes the major operation, and you're in the throwing position. But be sure your left foot is well to the outside of his right foot. To complete the minor operation, shift your weight to your left foot and swing your right foot forward between your left foot and his right. Strike his leg, calf against calf, and knock it out from under him. Once again, slowly. Your hands move to elbow and shoulder. Pull down on his elbow. Misdirect him. Then straighten your right arm. Shift your weight left. Leave plenty of room to get that right leg through. 
and strike him down. The harder you strike with your leg, the harder his fall will be. There are many variations in throwing, but these are the three basic methods. The hip throw, the shoulder throw, the leg hock. Remember, speed is essential, and speed comes only with practice. Every technique in judo should have a follow-through designed to put your opponent out of action. This is the judo blow. It is struck with a little finger edge of either hand. A blow struck with this side of the hand has many advantages over the ordinary blow struck with the fist. Power is concentrated in a relatively small area as compared with the broader striking surface of the fist. With the judo blow, you can reach certain parts of the body where it would be hard to place a fist. The judo blow may be struck either forehand or backhand with either hand, regardless of your position, while a man must be well balanced to strike a good blow with the fist. Effective blows are against the side of the neck, against the throat itself, against the trapezius muscle on top of the shoulder. The collarbone is easily broken by a well-placed judo blow, too. By striking across the flexor muscles on top of the forearm, you can make a man drop any weapon he has in his hand. The most common attack is the body hold. Judo offers an excellent defense against it. A man who tries to grab you about the body will be larger and stronger than you are. The best defense is prevention. The leg smash is effective to keep him away and to bring him down. Let's look at this again more slowly. As he steps toward you, pivot to the left on your left foot. Raise your right foot, bending your knee and coiling your leg. Turn your right foot lengthwise and parallel to the mat and place it across and slightly above his knee. Now straighten your leg, forcing him back and down. If struck hard, this leg smash may break his knee joint. Pivot on your left foot, raise and coil your right. Place your foot and let him have it. But perhaps your opponent will approach in a shuffling stance. In this case, you can step in toward him and drive a kick to the groin with either foot. As you kick, raise your arms to avoid a possible blow. A body hold under the arms from in front would mean an attempt to bend you backward, carry you to the ground, and work you over. But since your arms are free, there are several defenses. You may strike blows to the groin, to the kidneys, to his face or head, but there is an effective way of breaking this hold. This is a combination of several techniques. Now, once again, slowly. Bring your right hand to his chin, left hand to the small of his back. At the same time, drop straight down by moving your feet out to the sides and bending your knees, all one fluid motion. Then straighten your legs and your right arm. Pull toward you with your left hand. This breaks his balance to the rear. Holding him here, shift your weight to left foot and carry him down with a leg hock. As you go down with him by dropping to your knees, keep his right arm tucked beneath your left arm. As you strike the mat, bring your right hand to his right shoulder. Now bring your left arm beneath his right arm and grasp your own right wrist. You have him in an arm lock. To gain maximum pressure, use your body weight by straightening your right arm, arching your back, and leaning to the rear on his arm. If applied with a snap, this will break his arm at the elbow. There are quite a few separate movements in this escape, and only continuous practice will master it.
A body hold over the arms from in front is a much more logical way for an opponent to grab you. But your arms are free from the elbows down. Now more slowly. To break away, first use your thumbs. Reinforce your thumbs with your bent fingers. Draw them far to the rear and jab hard in his groin. Surprise and pain will cause him to pull his hips back quickly, giving you room to work. While he is off balance and surprised, make your move. Drop straight down, moving your feet to the sides and bending your knees. At the same time, raise your elbows to shoulder height. This breaks his hold around your arms. Now grab his right upper arm with your left hand. Start your right arm around his waist. And all in one motion, turn your body to the left for the hip throwing position. The rest is the simple hip throw. Break his balance, straighten your legs, carry him down. Jab with your thumbs, break the hold, then the hip throw. An opponent who grabs you from the rear will take you by surprise. But you have a great deal of freedom if he gets you in a body hold under the arms from the rear. Before he can make you black out by squeezing your chest, there are several minor defenses. Stamp on his instep with the heel of your shoe. Or scrape his shin with your heel. Move your hips to either side and strike a judo blow to his groin. Work on his fingers or wrists. Remember that basic principle. Your strongest against his weakest. Or you can drive the back of your head into his face. You can also take him down. Once more. First, reach back with your left hand and grasp the side of his pants. Now let your weight rest in his arms. Guide yourself with your left arm and jump around to his right rear. Body bent at the hips, knees bent. Grab him with both hands around his knees, straighten your upper body, and at the same time lift as high as possible. Come down on your left knee and slam him down. As he strikes, release his knee with your right hand and follow through. Grab his pants, get around him, sweep him up, and take him down. Your resistance is more limited if your opponent surprises you with a body hold over your arms from the rear. But again, your arms are free from the elbows down. This escape utilizes the shoulder throw. Here it is again, more slowly. Reinforce your thumbs with bent fingers and jab him hard in the groin. While he's off balance and surprised, Drop straight down and raise your elbows to shoulder height. This breaks his hold. Now grab his right arm with both hands, pull him hard against you, your right foot blocking his. This puts you in position for the shoulder throw. Straighten your legs, pull him forward, roll your shoulders to the right, and over he goes. Follow through with a judo blow. As you see, Certain judo movements combine with other movements to meet a specific situation. Here you are studying the basic movements. Judo offers the fastest and best defense against choke holds. If an opponent chokes you properly, you will black out in less than seven seconds. You will die in about 14 seconds, so you must work fast. There are many defenses against chokeholds that are fast, effective, and easily learned. First, the windmill defense. Again, slowly. In the windmill, you pivot at the waist and at the same time bring your arm over your head. This is effective in either direction. Your shoulder breaks his hold. Follow immediately with an elbow smash to the face or a judo blow. The windmill is just two simple movements. Another escape 
is the wedge. This is another simple movement. Now, in slow motion. First, drop your body down rapidly by splitting your feet to the front and rear and bending the knees in a modified boxer's position. At the same time, bring your hands together in front in a praying position. Then drive upward with the power of both arms and legs, striking his arms up and out. Immediately grab his shoulders or any loose clothing and jerk him forward to break his balance. Follow through with a knee to his groin. The wedge leaves you in a position to do considerable damage. Judo is very useful in close-in fighting. A defense particularly effective when your opponent has locked his elbows straight to gain maximum pressure with his thumbs is the elbow smash. This is all one fluid motion. It's a threefold action. Smash in with the heel of each hand against the outside of each of his elbows. Push up and push away. As he is driven back, follow through with a kick to the groin. These choke escapes are learned with very little practice. But this one is more complicated. It's called the wrist takedown. This wrist takedown is a basicment and should be learned well. With the wrist takedown, you can bring your man to the ground in a helpless condition. First, bring your left hand up. Place your thumb on the back of his right hand, keeping your elbow high. Take a half step to the rear with the left foot, bending and twisting your body slightly to the left. Slip your fingers into the palm of his hand. Bring your left elbow into your stomach muscles and you're free. Reinforce with your other hand immediately both thumbs on the back of his hand, fingers in his palm. Now take a full step to the rear, keeping both elbows locked in the stahara. Apply pressure to the wrist by bringing both of your hands down between your knees with a snap. As he falls, pivot on the left foot and pin his upper arm with your right knee. Keep his forearm perpendicular to the mat. The follow through here is to apply pressure on the back of his hand, down and to the left. This causes a painful grinding motion that can break his wrist. Let's look at it once more at normal speed. This wrist takedown will be used frequently in other techniques. The defense against a choke from the rear is known as a reverse windmill. The action is to the right, quick. Raise your right arm high. Pivot to the right on your right foot, all the way around next to him. Use your left arm and left leg to add to your momentum. When the choke hold is broken, use the follow through of your choice. An elbow smash, a knee to the groin, or a judo blow. Remember, choke holds need but a few seconds. Act instantly. But here is a choke hold that has no known break or defense. The bent arm choke. This particular hold will also be used in many other techniques. Here it is again in slow motion. It's a simple but deadly movement. Approach from the rear and strike across the soft part of his throat with the bony edge of your left forearm. Place your right hand at the small of his back, fingers pointing down. Shove with your right hand, pulling back with your left. This breaks his balance. The back of his head and neck rests on your left shoulder, your head alongside his. Your feet must be far enough to the rear so he can't reach your legs. His shoulders must be clear of your chest. Now bring your right arm up and reinforce your left hand. To apply pressure, roll your left shoulder into his head and pull to the rear with your left forearm. This is a very dangerous position. By throwing your feet to the rear, you can bring him down and break his neck. When working with your partner in training, be extremely careful not to carry him down in this position. If either of you should lose your balance and fall, 
turn loose immediately. The bent arm choke is a simple but deadly technique. Judo is invaluable in helping you to take prisoners easily. Three come-alongs are recommended. They are the finger come-along, the wrist come along, the hammerlock come along. In taking a prisoner, it is always best to work in pairs or as a team with prearranged signals. But sometimes you will have to take a prisoner by yourself. Each of the three come alongs you have seen has a purpose and each is very effective when properly applied. Let's examine each of them again. First, the finger come along. It can be applied on either hand, but your opponent's left hand is usually the best because it's the weakest. Facing your opponent, grasp his left wrist. At the same time, step to the right front with the right foot. Be sure to grasp his wrist very tightly. Reach forward with your right hand and grasp two fingers of his left hand. If you get more than two fingers, let all but two slide free. If you only get one finger, the come along is still effective. The free forefinger of your right hand lies across the back of the knuckles of his hand. As soon as you have the correct grip, jerk his arm straight down. Apply your initial pressure by pulling downward with your left hand and upward on his fingers with your right hand. Then pivot to your left on the balls of both feet and swing his arm upward in a wide arc until it has reached shoulder height. Keep your arms straight throughout so that you keep him at arm's length away from you. To apply maximum pressure, turn his wrist toward your face with your left hand and pull his fingers to the rear at the same time. Now use voice command to guide him and tell him exactly what to do. But remember, the finger come along is good for a short distance only. Your own arms will tire rapidly in this position. It's all one fast, continuous movement. In, around, and up. And keep him at arm's length. In the wrist come along, you also face your opponent and work on his left arm. Once again, more slowly. Step forward with your right foot. Reach out with your left hand and grasp the inside of his elbow. Now slam forward with your right hand to the back of his left hand. This is just as in bowling. Force his hand backward toward his forearm. Then place your right thumb in the palm of his hand and grasp across the back of his knuckles. As soon as you have this grip with both hands, apply initial pressure by pulling down with your left hand and forcing his hand to the rear and upward with your right hand. Now pivot to the left on the balls of both feet and crisscross your arms in front of you to bring his elbow tight against your right side. Keep his forearm parallel to the ground. Release your left hand and lock his elbow tight against your side with your own right elbow. Point the fingers of your left hand to the front and bring the little finger edge of your hand down between his thumb and forefinger. Maintain constant pressure to the rear on his hand while you release with your right and re-grasp with your left. Then bring your right hand around in front of his hand and grasp the meaty part of his thumb. This is the completed wrist come along. To apply maximum pressure, pull to the rear with your left hand and to the right with your right hand. Again, use voice command to guide him. This is not only a very effective come along, but you can hold it for a long time without tiring. The hammerlock come along is particularly useful when you can't get at a man's fingers. Now, once again. First, step in with the right foot, grasping the outside part of his left upper arm. Then you must do two things at once. Jerk hard with your left hand, forcing him to step forward. Second, 
drive forward with your right forearm, striking his forearm at right angles and knocking it to the rear. Then immediately pivot on both feet to the left. Now release your left hand and bring your right hand to the inside of his elbow, grasping it tightly. This brings his wrist into the crook of your right elbow. You can easily apply pressure by forcing his arm up his back. To complete the hammerlock come along, reach around to his head with your left hand and get a grip either under his chin, across his nose, or get a handful of hair. As you pull him into a standing position, it will be necessary to release part of the pressure with your right arm. But as soon as he is upright, put it on again. This completes the hammerlock. To apply maximum pressure, pull his head toward you over his left shoulder and force his left arm up toward his head. Again, use voice command to guide him. In any come along, pressure must be applied with common sense. Too much pressure and he may think he's going to be hurt anyway and might as well put up a fight. Too little and he may escape. The three come alongs you have seen will suit practically every situation. They are the finger come along, the wrist come along, the hammerlock come along. You must be particularly careful in handling a man who is drunk or drugged. He may be insensible to pain. Many of the familiar wrestling holes have a judo escape, but speed is essential. If your opponent has time to exert his full pressure, escape is very difficult. First, there's the full Nelson. When an opponent approaches from the rear and takes the full Nelson wrestling hold, quickly clasp your hands together. Raise the back of your hands to your forehead. This will help you resist his pressure for a few seconds, long enough to break the hold. With your hands to your forehead, bend your knees and drop straight down into the position for a shoulder throw. Then straighten your legs, bend forward at your waist, twist your shoulder to the right, and throw him over. If your opponent is a great deal taller than you are, you may have to turn your own body completely over to throw him. In breaking a wrestling hold, speed is essential, but speed comes only with practicing the correct movement slowly. Here is the escape from a side headlock. When an opponent catches you in a side headlock, work quickly before he can throw you. Bring your left arm up his back, over his right shoulder, and under his chin. At the same time, catch him behind the right knee with your right hand. Now straighten your upper body, pulling hard to the rear with your left hand to break his balance. At the same time, pull upward with your right hand, lifting him from the ground. Lift him as high as possible and slam him down. Follow through with a judo blow. When working with your training partner, go to the mat quickly with your left knee to prevent his falling across it. Next, a defense against the front headlock. To escape from the front headlock, first bring your left hand up to his right elbow and your right hand to his right fist. As your pressure causes his grip to relax, slide your head out from his arm, but stay low. Continue your pressure forcing him off balance to the rear. As he goes off balance, step to your left front with your left foot. Bring your right leg high, come in against his right leg and hock him down. Keeping your grip on his elbow and wrist, bend your knees and go down with him. When you have him down, pin his upper arm with your knee and apply pressure to his wrist. You should be discovering by now that there are relatively few basic judo movements. These movements are combined into tactics to meet many situations. A difficult hold to break when properly applied is the hammerlock. Again, speed is essential. 
and you must start your escape before your opponent can get his maximum pressure. As your opponent maneuvers you into the hammerlock, stamp hard on his instep with the heel of your right foot. At the same time, squat by bending both knees. Bend forward at the waist and straighten your captured arm. Then immediately straighten your legs. Step to the outside of his right foot with your own right foot and grab him around the head with your right arm. Now pivot to the left, slam your hips into his groin and use the hip throw. Follow through with a judo blow. If your opponent gets his full pressure on you in any wrestling hold, there is little you can do. You must act quickly. You must develop speed through practice. Judo is the best defense against a knife or a club. If you're attacked by a man with a knife, grab anything you can get your hands on. Another knife, a bottle, a rock, anything. Or as he jumps you, you can pivot and drive against his leg with a knee smash. Or you can stop him with a kick to the groin. If infighting is unavoidable, there are two basic positions. Inside. Outside. These two positions are in relation to your opponent's knife arm. And each position has its own defense technique. First, let's examine your defense from the outside. The first defense against a vertical blow is blocking outside. You can't anticipate his blow or he'll change it. You must wait till it starts. Then block his arm before he gains his maximum momentum. First, move toward him by stepping to the outside and forward with your left foot. At the same time, block the blow with the arm nearest his, in this case, your right arm. Block high and hard using the entire forearm, elbow to fingertips. But this outside blocking action is only the preliminary movement for one of two holds. First, the arm lock. Now let's look at that again more slowly. As soon as you have stopped his blow by blocking with your right arm, bring your left hand sharply against the rear of his elbow at the same time forcing back with your right forearm. Now let your left hand slide through the bend of his arm and grab your own right wrist. Bend your right hand down to keep him from straightening his arm. Force him off balance to the rear by leaning forward. Come through with your right leg and hock him down. Drop to both knees and go down with him. When you hit the ground, force his hand back and use the weight of your body by placing your chest on top of his elbow. To apply pressure, roll your body forward on his elbow. This will dislocate or break his wrist, and you can release your left hand and pick up the knife. As with all judo techniques, the arm lock is done with machine-like precision. Block the knife, get your hold, take him down, and apply the minor operation. Your second defensive tactic from the outside is only a slight variation of the bent arm choke. Again, slowly. You have already studied the bent arm choke. Note the only difference, the way the knife is avoided. The block again. Then slide your right arm down until you contact his wrist. Grab his wrist, hold tightly, and leap around into the bent arm choke position. Since you will be unable to hold his wrist very long in this position, you must carry him on down to the ground by throwing your feet to the rear. This can be very dangerous in training. So just apply pressure with your left arm until he drops the knife. The bent arm choke one more time. Block, take his wrist, leap around, get your choke hold, and make him drop the knife. Now for defenses from the inside. Inside means you are directly in front of your opponent. Again, the first defense is blocking inside. As in the outside block, you step forward with your left foot and block with the arm nearest his, your left arm in this case. 
block high and hard to stop the momentum of his blow. After blocking the blow, there are several effective measures. As soon as you stop the momentum of his blow, drive your right knee into his groin and chop a judo blow with your right hand. This is a very simple but very effective movement. Another defense from this position is the leg hock. Once more. First, you step in and block. When you have stopped the momentum of his blow, slide your left hand down to his wrist and grasp it tightly. Then immediately shoot your cupped right hand to his throat, breaking his balance to the rear. Now swing your right leg through and hock him down. Follow him down, keeping your right hand on his throat, driving his head to the ground. Then raise his right arm and smash his elbow down against your knee. Continue pressure until you break his arm. Once again, at normal speed. Block the blow, take his wrist and throat and hock him down. Then apply leverage with his elbow across your knee. Another defense, which you have already seen, is the shoulder throw. Again. First, block the blow as usual and take his wrist. Then place your right hand just above his right elbow and you're in the shoulder throw position. Twist your body to the right in one jump, but be sure to hold his knife hand well out in front to avoid being cut. When you have him down, quickly follow with a judo blow. To perfect the shoulder throw, you and your partner will need a great deal of practice, not only in throwing, but in falling. So far, you've been examining the defenses against a vertical stabbing motion with a knife. Here is a defense against a straight thrust with a knife. Don't anticipate his move. Wait until it begins. Then pivot to the right and bring your left hand shoulder high. Your left forearm will automatically parry the thrust out of line with your body. Then slide your left arm down until your hand contacts his and take the basic wrist grip. Put your thumb on the back of his hand, fingers around the meaty part of his thumb. Reinforce immediately with your right hand over his grip so that he can't release the knife. Now step straight to the rear with your left foot. Put pressure on his wrist and force him down. Follow him down by pivoting on your right foot. Pin his knife arm down with your knee to keep him from rolling over. Keep his forearm perpendicular. Apply pressure on his wrist and twist to the left, dislocating or breaking it. The defense you have just seen is for use when your opponent has the knife at his hip, ready to thrust straight for your stomach. Most of the defenses against the knife can be used equally as well at other times. Suppose if, instead of a knife, your opponent is armed with a club. Against a roundhouse blow with a club, the defense is only slightly different. Now, more slowly. In this position, you can't step in and block, because your arm would take the heavy blow rather than blocking it. So wait until he has started his swing, then drop straight down. The judo squat is the fastest way of getting down. Move your feet out from under you to either side and bend your knees. Keep your body straight and your head up, left arm beside your head for protection. When the blow has passed over your head, shoot your left hand out to his elbow or upper arm to prevent a backhand blow. Then drive across with your right forearm hard to your opponent's throat. Use your maximum power, breaking his balance to the rear. Then jump around into the bent arm choke position. This takes perfect timing and a perfect knowledge of your separate movements. Judo makes your police riot club a much more effective weapon. The police riot club should be carried on the belt on the left side of your body. The club should be secured in a holster or club carrier. The club is always used in your left hand. This leaves your right hand free to handle your pistol if necessary.
you should practice the use of your club in your left hand. The nomenclature of the club is in three parts. The club, the grip, and the thong. To hold the club properly, place the thong over your left thumb, across the back of your hand, and grasp the grip. When a new club is assigned, you should adjust the thong to fit your hand. If the thong is too large, cut it to fit properly. Never secure or bind a thong to your thumb or wrist. The club is never taken from your belt or used except in an emergency. When a blow is struck, it should be to stun or temporarily disable rather than to injure. Blows to the head should be used only as a last resort and then they should be struck at an angle and bounced off the side of your opponent's head. If you hit him squarely, you may fracture his skull. You may also break your club, leaving yourself defenseless. When you use your club merely as an extension of your arm, it is much more effective than when used as a bludgeon. It is easily adapted to parrying blows. If the situation warrants the use of your club, use it forcibly, reducing your opponent's resistance in the shortest possible time. The throat, the trapezius muscle over the shoulder, the solar plexus. The club should be used on the same sensitive spots that are recommended for the judo blow. There are three holes with the club that have many uses. First, the crisscross strangle hold. the Japanese rear choke, the riot club come along. Now let's analyze each of these. To obtain the crisscross stranglehold, place your left hand over your opponent's right shoulder so that the club contacts the soft part of the front of his throat. Now cross your right arm over to the left side of his head and grasp the club so that both hands are snug against the sides of his throat. This is the completed hold. To obtain maximum pressure, pull your elbows to the outside. There are a variety of uses for this hold. To keep a man helpless while your partner searches for weapons, or to forcibly remove him from the vicinity. The crisscross strangle hold is easily obtained and very secure. A variation of the stranglehold is the Japanese rear choke. First, place your left hand over your opponent's left shoulder with the club against the front of his throat. Then catch the free end of the club in the crook of your right elbow and bring your right hand to the back of his head. That's all there is to it. To apply pressure, pull to the rear with your left hand and force his head forward with your right hand. This is a typical example of using the club as an extension of your own arm. The Japanese rear choke is very useful for keeping a man quiet temporarily. The riot club come along is particularly effective. Jerk down on his arm to straighten it and immediately swing it up to shoulder height with his palm upward. Bend his hand down at the wrist. Then move the club under his right arm and place it behind his head and neck. Dig the large knuckle of your thumb into the upper part of his arm, about two inches above the elbow, so that it contacts the very sensitive ulnar nerve. This is the completed come along. To apply pressure, shove up with the knuckle of your left hand against the ulnar nerve. At the same time, pull down with your right hand and twist his right hand towards you. When practicing this come along with your partner, be careful not to strike his head when you place the club against his neck. These three techniques with the club should be well practiced. The crisscross strangle hold, the Japanese rear choke, the 
the Riot Club Come Along. In this picture, you have seen demonstrations of the basic judo techniques. These that you have seen are by no means all the tricks there are. But if you study these few, if you thoroughly understand their principles, if you practice their correct movements slowly for a time, soon you will gain surprising speed and expertness. Judo, like the original Japanese art of jujitsu, is really an art. It has rhythm, grace, precision. It must be learned like a dance. But it is a deadly art. Practice it carefully and correctly. It may someday save your life. 